Hey Cougs, I am so excited today. I have a very special episode and you may, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna throw it out there. You may consider a little career pivots. You may consider a little extra education because I have the inside scoop of this amazing program that exists in WSU. It kind of combines engineering, leadership, business, project management. I had no clue this secret weapon existed and I have, I'm just so excited to have this conversation. So both Nick and Kay are here to tell us all about it. I'm gonna have them introduce themselves and a little bit more about how the heck they got involved with this program. It's called the Engineer and Technology Management Voiland College of Engineering and Architecture. I'm so excited you're both here. Kay, I'm gonna have you kick it off. Give us a little introduction of who you are and how the heck you ended up in this program, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. And and thanks, Cougs First, for having us here today. We are excited to, to let everybody know about the program. I'm Dr. Kay Bachman, and a lot of students actually know me as Doc Bach. So one student kind of got their words mixed up one night, and they were trying to be very formal by calling me Dr. Bachman. And it just kind of got messed up, and it came out Doc Bach. And it stuck. It really stuck. And so a lot of students actually refer to me as, as Doc Bach. I'm actually a, a, an associate professor. I've been with the METM program for about seven years. I'm also the graduate study committee chair for ETM. So I wear lots of hats. I'm based here in Spokane, which for some of you, um, that's just north of our main WSU campus, which is in Pullman, north about 80 miles or so, or 300 miles east of Seattle. And again, I'm just delighted to be here. So thanks for having us. Yeah. And I, I just think being able to per provide the perspective of the inner workings of the program as a professor, what you see, trends. I'm, I just really value your insights. And we're also joined by Nick, who just completed the program. So we're going to get the inside and outside scoop, and I'm really excited. So Nick, could you give us a little introduction of who you are? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. And it's a real pleasure to be able to represent Cougar Nation uh, all the way from uh, Kobila Gora, Poland. Uh, which is where I'm currently at as I'm uh, vacationing with my wife and our two-month-old son, uh, introducing him to that half of the family. So uh, really excited to be here, really excited to be a part of this podcast. So my name is Nick Bruni. I'm a senior engineering manager at Boeing in Seattle. I work for Boeing Testing and Evaluation. And my, my specific uh, business unit, we handle all of the maintenance for the, the strategic assets for Boeing testing and evaluation in the Northwest uh, or the Puget Sound region more specifically. Uh, I've got about 45 direct and indirect reports and we manage uh, everything kind of up and down the I-5 waterfront. So from Everett down to Auburn, uh, a geographical distance of about 50 miles. So we handle uh, very large uh, strategic assets. So think the, the Boeing transonic wind tunnel, which uh, is a testing platform that we use to, to test models of, of new products um, at speeds up to uh, in excess of Mach 1, uh, all the way down to desktop, benchtop testing equipment for various uh, engineers and scientists testing the, the latest, greatest and newest products uh, and parts and, and materials for the Boeing company. So Came into the uh, the METM program in 2020 after graduating my undergrad in operations management at Clover Park Technical uh, College in Lakewood, Washington. Uh, I actually kind of stumbled across it as I was looking for something that was engineering heavy, but not necessarily a, a master's in engineering. Um, and I found this program uh, when I looked for global opportunities because being in in Washington State. You know, my I thought my options were going to be relatively limited for a master's program that fit my background, where I'm looking for something that's that's technically biased, but also uh, plays a plays a fair to significant role with the leadership side as well. So, really excited to to get into this podcast and and chat about what my experience was like and uh, any aspiring uh, METM program hopefuls that are out there and, and are really curious I'm, I'm happy to provide my my two cents and if you want to reach out to me outside of this podcast i'm i'm happy to indulge your curiosities yeah i 
I'm grateful for the perspective that both of you bring to the table in this conversation. Before we hit record, you know, it, it's kind of reminiscent of some of the engineering programs I got to be a part of in my undergrad that would team up engineers in business. And I was just, we were just kind of speaking about the value that that brings, where you kind of bring together both sides of the brain. And there is this bridge that needs to happen. And I think this program is such a great offer for people and complementary, depending on where they want to take their business next. But before we dive into the program, I just want a quick answer. How, why WSU? So how did you end up at WSU specifically? Kay, I'll have you go first. And then Nick, I, you kind of answered, but I'm curious if there's anything else that led into your decision making. You know, for me, it's not how, it's really about the why. And uh, I grew up south of Pullman. Um, I knew I was destined to go to WSU. There was no other school for me. So I uh, got my undergrad in, at WSU way back when, um, then went on and I've had a 35 year career, mainly in project management. Um, I worked for Avista Utilities uh, for about, about 22 years, and they really kicked it off for me in project management. And one day, one of the vice presidents said, hey, there's a program at WSU, and it's actually this program. And they, they offered this certificate in project management, and we really need more of this here. So, you know, I went on and I got the, the certificate in project management from ETM, and it opened up so many doors for me. It elevated me in a, into a career that I would have never imagined. Um, then I went on, um, was able to acquire a master's in organizational leadership, went on for a PhD in leadership theory, all the while, while I was holding on to this whole technical project management um, mindset. And I saw that there was a, an area where we could blend the two leadership and project management. And that was what my whole thesis and dissertation was about. Um, I had then an uh, idea to take a whole career move. So seven years ago, I said, I wanna go back to the ETM program and I want to teach, I want to share all those experiences that I've had throughout my career with others and make a difference. And that's really how I got there. So for me, it was more about the why. And the why is I wanted to come back to WSU. It's where it all began for me. And um, I, I wanted to make a difference. And WSU METM was, was where I wanted to be. Oh, that's really cool to hear. Thanks for sharing. Nick, what's your answer? Sure. So after uh, I retired from the United States Navy in 2018, I was finishing up my undergrad at Clover Park Technical College in operations management with a distinct uh, bias for manufacturing technologies. My entire career in the Navy was around uh, high mix, zero failure, high quality uh, repair of propulsion systems, nuclear and non-nuclear surface and submarine systems. Um, so yeah, after, uh, you know, after retiring from the United States Navy, I wanted something that not only drew upon my experiences uh, from the Navy and, and something that would help leverage uh, those, those skill sets and, and help hone those skill sets. But, uh, it was a it was a fairly easy jump for me to go into the the METM program after reviewing the the curriculum, reviewing the courses, uh, and reviewing the options that were available. Really, me living in University Place, Washington, uh, after retiring, it's it's just west of Tacoma, Washington. So if you're familiar with the Puget Sound area, it's it's just to the west and bottom of the Puget Sound. But there aren't a whole lot of offerings uh, which wouldn't require me to commute a great distance. While UW at the time had had some engineering biased programs in the Tacoma area, the that campus was really starting to kick off. It's gotten quite a bit bigger now, but there just weren't a great deal of of options available. So I was looking at uh, a number of of colleges on the East Coast, 
Um, and then I thought, well, why don't I check out WSU and see what offerings they are, they present? And the METM program was was a shoe in. It was uh, easily marketable to me. Um, it, it called to my background. It provided me uh, the the scope of of option, uh, not only in certificates. Uh, you know, Doc Bach mentioned getting her grad certificate in project management, which I also got, but uh, also offered uh, graduate certificates in leadership, in supply chain, in uh, theory of constraints, in systems engineering. So just a, a, a huge swath of, of exposure to various um, specialties and subspecialties within uh, what I thought the the engineering and technology and and manufacturing world would would certainly be um, beneficial to me. So it it was it's a very easy win for me, and and it being a global opportunity provided me the opportunity to to be able to go to class after work um, and be able to uh, to you know do all of the things that I needed to do at work at home. Um, it provided a, a great balance. Uh, in my life. Um, I wasn't a full-time student while I was doing it. I was able to do it literally one class a semester. Uh, after graduating my undergrad in 2020 and right as COVID was hitting, there really wasn't a whole lot of options to, to go to sit in class anymore. So it was, um, I'll, I'll try to be a uh, a part-time student with my with my master's degree and took two classes. I was a full-time student for my undergrad and thought, oh, I can handle that. That was not a, a wise move. My my wife said, no, you are not doing this again. Uh, you can take one class a semester. So that's what I did. I took one class a semester. And I apologize again. I'm, I'm coming to you live from Kabila Gura. I'd love to have my camera on. And unfortunately, I have a, I'm having some bandwidth issues, so I've, I've, I've got to just have my, my profile picture up here. So hopefully that answers your question, Kelsey. Sorry, I, yeah. I tangented a little bit there. No, I think that the why matters, and I love, I love that you said that, Kay. I'm a Simon Sinek girly. I think I <laughs> think that you might be too. I just have a hunch, and I think that's really important. But oh, yeah. there's the logistical <laughs> side of things, and it sounds like for you, Nick, this this program filled a lot of gaps for you and had a practical side that applied very well to where you're headed. And I think that's, that's important as well. Yeah. Kelsey, we are, we are 100% online and we have been, um, you know, when COVID hit, you know, we were hearing about everybody pivoting and having to go online. Well, we were already there. So it was nothing new or different for us. We didn't, there was no, you know, um, nothing for us to learn. We just carried on, as Nick was saying, just as we always do. And we do, we cater, we cater to the working professional like Nick is, is illustrating for us. Um, our classes start at 515 in the evening, and we go for two and a half hours. And so for every class you're taking, it's one night a week is what it is. And, you know, and we don't, um, require you to be in our live classes because you are working professionals and stuff happens. So, you know, we record every single session and students can get onto those recordings and stay up with what's going on in the classroom. And that's what we hear about, you know, from so many students. It's about the flexibility, you know, that's a huge benefit for our program. Yeah. And just to, uh... Just to piggyback a little bit off of that, Kay, and I hate to use that euphemism, but it, I, I've leveraged that option myself. Uh, you, you know, stuff does happen in lives, and it's it's challenging. Not only is it challenging sitting in a in a class for two and a half hours at the end of your workday, at the you know you've got family requirements, children requirements. Now you have school requirements. You still have work requirements. So, so you have all of those pressures that are that are ever present, and having that flexibility to be able to just say, you know what, I I'm not able to take care of this today. I have other commitments that are going to take precedence. I'll get on this. 
either tomorrow or I'll get on it this weekend, but I will make sure to, to accomplish the, uh, you know, sitting through the, sitting through the class, listening to the lecture and then completing whatever assignment was due that week. It, it was absolutely fantastic. And I, I can't thank WSU and, and Kay and, and the rest of the faculty enough for, for their flexibility um, to highlight that flexibility. My, my son was born the week that I was supposed to provide my, uh, my oral dissertation for, for my capstone. Uh, working with Dr. Magpili and, and Doc Bach and Doc Jones, Dr. Magpili was in Cameroon. So having, having her be flexible while she's in Cameroon, the rest of the faculty being flexible for me, for singular student me, um, to finish my more oral presentation a week ahead of time. And thankfully, it, you know, thankfully that was the case. And, you know, the, the Monday uh, following my son was born. So it, it could not have worked out more perfectly. So that flexibility really is uh, a, a significant lever that I think this program gets to pull and gets to flex uh, as often and, and as necessary for their students as possible. I think it's, it's really tremendous. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And you kind of spoke to this, Nick, but I was looking at the curriculum too. I was just curious what type of courses are selected. So Kay, this is a question for you. When you're thinking of the ideal student for this program and you're thinking of what courses do they need that will support their career goals and completion of this program, what are you, what are the factors that you're looking into? How do you put that together, both as a professor, being on the chair and just your involvement? How do you put together those topics? What does that look like, you know, in the, in the planning side of things? Sure, sure. You know, and I, I want to, that's a great question, Kelsey. And one that I think we need to highlight the fact that in the name or the title of our program, Engineering and Technology Management, that word engineering um, can be a little frightening or scary to some of our folks. Now, for, for sure, we've got engineers that are coming to us like Nick um, and, and other engineers from other industries for sure. But we also have a very diverse population of industries. We have people coming to us from uh, the medical fields, pharmacy, for example, we've got um, my, uh, microbiology students, we have ag students coming in, a lot of telecommunication folks in here. So we've got a wide variety. So it's it's not just singling um, out or it's it we're just not looking for engineers we're we're offering our program to anyone that really is looking for that career advancement when we're looking at our applicants when they're coming in we take a very holistic look at not only your undergrad and what you how well you've done um, in your undergrad, you know, experience. Sure, we're looking for a certain GPA. We're looking for a 3.0 on that. But um, we also look at your experiences and your aspirations of what you want to do. Um, and so we take a very holistic look, um, which I feel is different than a lot of programs. It's not just about, well, you know, what are the prerequisites and, and what is your GPA? So we, we really do look at that. And we ask for a personal statement. And that's very important for us because that's going to give us insight to the why the student is, is really applying. Um, we want to hear about those career aspirations and why you're coming into the program. What is it that you want from us? So those are that, does that answer your questions? Does that get to the looking at uh, the student coming in to that applicant. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, we kind of said it off air a bit, but my brain went to, this is comparable, but also a little different than an MBA program. But yes. that, that person who's looking for that additional level of tools and support and potentially community to advance oh. their career. And I, I envision, you know, I'm married to someone who business at WSU, engineering from a different university, I won't say on the air, 
And so he is that hybrid person where he speaks the engineering language, but also the business language. And this to me is like a perfect marriage of the two, but it felt oh, like it is just reading about it. It felt very like real world and like timely too. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. just curious. Well, and you know, what we see is we are preparing our students to, to move into those management positions, into those leadership roles. And it really is a program objective or a mission if you want is for us to really equip our students with those tools and those techniques that's going to take them to that next level of their career. And, and you know, it, in today's environment, technology is everywhere, right? All of our organizations have, uh, we're technology driven in one way, shape or form. And so it's, that's really our objective is, is applying allowing students to apply those tools and techniques in areas that are going to make a difference. Totally. Nick, I'm curious from your vantage point, what has been the most powerful or impactful part of this program thinking about your career currently? Uh, I think the exposure for me has been really impactful. Like uh, Doc Bach was mentioning, there's, there's a number of different students from a number of different walks of life that come into this program. And this program provides tools and techniques and exposure to lots of different uh, thoughts and theories about engineering and technology management. So going through a, a, a number of the electives for me were, were lean and quality based, um, but one of the most impactful uh, things for me was going through the theory of constraints classes and understanding and applying those methodologies to things that I was already familiar with, like Lean and Six Sigma, and how um, how all of those techniques are all complementary to each other. So not only are you understanding the quality side of it, but you're also understanding of, well, where, where do I, in, in my just walking around my shops, walking around my operations, where do I see waste happening? How can I how can I eliminate that waste or or non value added work? Oh, and also we have some very specific capabilities with our strategic asset populations. How do we ensure that those are constantly running and those are constantly being used to their utmost capabilities and leveraging some of those theory of constraints? Um, interestingly enough my project for, for Theory of Constraints and, and Lisa Scheinkoff is an absolutely brilliant and amazing professor for the program. I, I don't know how WSU was able to reel her in, um, but having somebody that studied under Eli Goldratt and, and being able to provide that level of, of understanding and knowledge and, and perspective was, was just mind blowing to me. I, I thought I knew what it was coming in. I was completely uh, flabbergasted and floored when when I started into the project, but I use my own business as as the the capstone for for those classes, and it really changed my perspective about how I view my own capability, and it it caused me to really dive into a lot of assumptions that I was making, and that my my team were making, and that my leadership was making. So I was able to articulate in a way that made sense to my team, as well as made sense to my leadership about, about the why. Why are we doing it this way? What is that? Do we need, do we need to do it? Is, do we even need to do this? So, so just really diving down into assumptions was, was really triggering for me uh, in, in the best of ways. So uh, from from my perspective and, and from my business uh, with Boeing, it's I, I've been able to to leverage those tools and, and processes to save significant capital and significant uh, expense earnings for my larger business unit and, and uh, created a lot of, a lot of opportunities for not only me, but also for that may have been used as waste and successful. Really proud of the work that uh, we've been able to accomplish and uh, look forward to continuing that throughout, uh, throughout my organization. 
that's awesome to hear that you've had that amount of impact so recently from finishing too. I think that's probably a good sign of a good program. Yeah, okay, it, so it not not just from finishing. Sorry, it was uh, in situ. I was still going through the program and still and being okay. able to apply those tools as I was as I was working through the problems as I was actively working through the class. Yeah. Can I add to that? Please do. <laughs> you know, it's one of the greatest things as as a professor is we teach a te tool or a technique one night and students are really excited about it. And we hear, huh, I'm going to try that. Next week comes around, we're opening up the class and students are just telling us, oh, my gosh, I tried that at work. It made a huge difference. You know, we've been struggling with this for the last five years. It took us two hours and we've got it figured out. So, you know, for 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 uh, the professors, for the faculty, that's one of the greatest things that we can hear. Yeah. And from a from a leadership perspective, I think one of the things that we hate hearing is, well, we've always done it that way. Yeah. But why? Why have we always done it that way? And do we need to continue doing it that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I have one more like serious question than a series of rapid fires. I want to run through both of you. But my last kind of question is, what is one, one philosophy or principle in the program that you both are connected to that could be a great lesson for someone listening who isn't in your world, who isn't in the business world or engineering? Maybe what's like one just, yeah, philosophy or theory that you think would be applicable to the general public, maybe the working public. We'll get a little specific. Okay, you know, first. you know, I teach the leadership class and um, we have we have four core classes and leadership is one of those. And um, for me, that theory of how can I best realize myself as a leader? You know, what's what's the whole awareness that I have about me as a leader and and really focusing on myself? Second part of that, this is three parts. Second part of that is how can I lead others well? So from a leadership perspective, you know, what can I do to be a better communicator in that leadership role? How can I motivate all of those um, things for others? And then the third part of that is how, as a leader, can I contribute to the overall organizational or the system goals and strategies that are out there. So for me, that leadership piece and, you know, all the technical tools and techniques come into that. But really, for me, it's it's really honing in on on that leadership role and, you know, looking at self, others and the organization or the system. Great answer. Nick, what's yours? <laughs> Yeah, I, I love that answer. That's something that, that I carried with me after leaving the service. Um, something that as a as a senior NCO that we're 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 trained to do where it's it's you know team above self. So uh, I really appreciate that answer, Doc Bach. Uh, I'll lean in on the, on the technical side. Um, while I, I absolutely uh, appreciate and believe that a strong leader is a selfless leader and a humble leader. But you also have to have credibility. You also have to have the the trust of your team and that you you know what you're doing with what you're doing. So I wouldn't necessarily go into a pharmacologist's office and say, "Well, I'm just going to grab some of these pills off of the shelf because it's fine." Uh, you know, I I I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express, so I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> leveraging the the, leveraging the the theory of constraints, leveraging lean and six sigma methodologies, those to me, as well as project management, which I'm surprised Doc Bach you didn't touch on, um, th those methodologies are applicable to any and every field. It really doesn't matter what you're doing and what your career goals are, what your focuses are. You can find streams of waste in in an office space. I, one of the great examples with theory of constraints was they they saw that uh, there was challenges with um, surgeons on on staff and being able to to assist patients. Well, surgery isn't manufacturing. It it doesn't. It's not a one for one 
um, translation, but throughput is. And if you haven't gone into a doctor's office recently, I can tell you now there's a person that follows the doctor around with an iPad or with a computer and takes notes and is their scribe. Because why would I pay a doctor, however much I'm paying a doctor, to take notes when their focus should be on the patient? I can pay somebody you know, significantly less than, than the surgeon to do the things that you know, anybody can do well. Anybody can write. Anybody can take notes. Anybody can can prepare um, you know, some some general administrative files for a company. I I need the people that can only do what they do well, doing only what they do well, and that's what I tell my team. You know, I I don't want you focused on cleaning the floor. I don't want you focused on. Uh, changing the light bulbs. I, I'll get somebody else to do that. I want you focused on the things that you bring the most value to and and do only that. So that's where I think the, the greatest value is in, in this program is, is really exposing a wide variety of professions to, to a singular program and exposing the students in that program to those various types of professionals and and learning where you may be able to to provide some value add and and some some feedback to those professionals outside of your your chosen um, career path so it, it's really eye-opening um hearing people in in the cosmetics industry people in the pharmacy industry people in agriculture um you know there there isn't a great deal of of similarities between a lot of the students, which is uh, really a breath of fresh air. It gives you different perspective and different opportunity to collaborate. That's amazing. I told you both this would go fast and it has (laughs) flown by. It's time for my five rapid fire questions. And the caveat to this is just answering quick, what kind of comes top of mind and then we'll end and make sure that people know exactly where to go to learn more about this program. I have a feeling you might get some interest from this episode. So I want to make sure we direct people the right place. But that being said, rapid fire, I'll read a question. Kay, I'll have you go first. Nick, I'll always have you go second and we'll just rock through these next five questions. Are you both ready? Ready. Okay. Sounds great. First question is, would you rather lead a team training with a team of engineers or a team of business professionals? Team of engineers. Nick? Engineers. <laughs> okay, number two. What is your favorite project management related tip? Work to uh, be on time, under budget, and hit all those performance or quality um, objectives that you set out in the beginning? For me, it would be stay organized, stay flexible. Great. Okay, number three, what's the best type of place to have a business meeting? Online. I think in a limited setting. I, I think if it's a, a one-on-one or, or uh, I like the the Jeff Bezos idea of of no more than enough people to to feed with two pizzas. <laughs> I've never heard that. That's great. That's awesome. All right, number four, your favorite leadership quote. Start with why, Simon Sinek. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I I I. I follow Simon Sinek quite a bit, so it it definitely comes down to why. Yeah. Again, going, going back to the assumptions, challenge your assumptions. Yep. Yep. So good. And then the last question, what are the top three reasons someone should enroll and be a part of this program? Um, great instructors, 100% online and such a great value that this program brings. Awesome, Nick? Uh, Tremendous flexibility, tremendous value, tremendous perspective. That was amazing. Both of you did so good. I, (laughs) as promised, I wanna make sure we direct people some places. So Nick, if we'll start with you, if someone's listening and they're like, I kinda like what this guy has to say, I'd love to 
maybe bug them on LinkedIn. What's the best place for them to get connected with you? Yeah, LinkedIn's a great opportunity space for me. Um, I I leverage it regularly. So um, Nicholas, N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S dot Bruni, B-R-U-N-N-E-Y. Perfect. And Doc Bach, Kay, can you explain where can people learn more about the program? Hey, yeah, it's pretty easy. Uh, etm.wsu.edu is our webpage. You can find literally everything there. Um, if you want to jump on and apply, there's a link there for you on that. We do have a couple of upcoming information sessions and check us out on LinkedIn. You can find access to uh, those information sessions that are coming up here in the near future. Awesome. And we'll have those linked in the show notes for you yeah. listening and watching. And, you know, I might be going out on a limb here, but if you're interested in talking project management, leadership, want more information about the METM program, go ahead and contact me. It's lowercase letter K, Bachman, B-A-C-H-M-A-N, at WSU.edu. Hey, I like that limb. I think it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for providing just such a well-rounded perspective on this. And I think it, I know I walked away learning something. I think it was really valuable. I'm excited this program exists and it was wonderful to meet both of you. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Kelsey. Yeah, thank you. And go Cougs. Go Cougs.